everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the ESP32 in AP mode. That is Wi-Fi access point mode, where the ESP32 will act as its own standalone Wi-Fi network, allowing other devices such as your phone or laptop or, other, or any other Wi-Fi enabled device to connect to the ESP32 and start being served um, HTTP responses. So the example we'll be going over today is we'll be setting this device in AP mode and we'll set up a simple server where we can go to the home IP address here without any extensions and be served as hello world in the browser. So that's pretty cool and this can have many powerful use cases in terms of setting up local networks without the need to set up any external Wi-Fi router. So we'll be connecting to this device without actually having to connect to the World Wide Web, which is pretty powerful. It can have some advanced use cases in terms of developing local networks with your IoT applications. So in order to get started with this example today, we're gonna to have to be an Arduino and we're gonna to have to have an ESP32 connected to our computer. And as you can see, I am already connected to my board. I just went and installed the ESP32 by Expressive Systems Board Manager and I selected the ESP32 dev module. And I just started a new sketch with this code here. So this is all the code we'll be going over today and I'll have everything you need to get started with this AP mode for the device. So if you, if you don't want to copy this code, I'm just going to have it in my GitHub page so you guys can just copy it and do whatever you want with it. And if you have any questions about this code, let me know in the comment section down below. So we're just gonna run through it real quick and hopefully uh, once we do, you can just go plug this into your device and you should be able to have the same results as me. So the first thing you want to do in AP mode is we want to get the Wi-Fi library and we want to set the SSID and password of our network. So in this case, you can really set it as whatever you want. If you, if you do want this to be a secure network, you probably want a more complicated password but for our case today, we're just gonna set the password to one to nine, and we're just gonna set the SSID as this, and this is just the name of our network. So this is the network we'll be connecting to, which will be the network produced by the ESP32 once we run this code, and it's going to be on port 80. So in the setup initially, simply what we're doing here is we're just using the Wi-Fi library to set up the AP mode and get the IP address of our device. So the IP address of your device should be different. As you can see in this browser here, I connected to this IP address, but really yours should be different there. So make sure you don't get confused. Go get your IP address from the console log and don't try to do this one. And if you find out it's not working at the beginning, it might be your IP address is, is wrong in your browser. And we're just gonna start the device in AP mode. It's really that simple to initialize this in AP mode. Really nice with this Wi-Fi library. And the most complicated stuff is in this loop here, but I'm just gonna go over at a high level so what we're doing in this loop here is that the device is expecting a client to connect. So it's just waiting for a client every interval. And finally, once we have a client to connect, in this case, our laptop for today, what we're going to do is we're just gonna print new clients and we're just gonna handle the HTTP request from the client. So what we have here is we're just reading uh, bytes from the client and we're just printing them and we're just doing some handling of the bytes. So we're not actually going to return the response until we handle the full HTTP request. So that's pretty much all this logic here is what it's doing. We're just handling all the bytes received from the clients and byte by byte. And finally, once we get to the end of the HTTP requests, this signals the end of my HTTP request, but some HTTP requests will have a different um, ending signal, I, I believe, or some other types of requests that aren't HTTP will have other ending signals. So if you're having issues of you not being able to see the hello world, it might be that you have to change this length I realize. So this isn't the most robust way to handle all HTTP requests, but I believe it should work with this example. So if you're having any issues not seeing the hello world, let me know in the comment section down below, but I believe it should be equals equals two because we have two characters at the end of the HTTP request. And so once we get that, pretty much all, all what we're doing is we're just sending an HTTP response. So this is how we format an HTTP response here. And I'm not gonna get into the details too much about how an HTTP response is formatted. Just know that we have a 200, which is an okay message, and we're just going to pass the contents. In this case, it's just some simple HTML. And really, you can get more complicated and add buttons and get a response after you click that button. So you can really do some cool and powerful things using this local network by doing some more complicated HTML and other um, scenario handling that you could use for your applications. And so pretty much we si signal the end of the HTTP response so the browser should know. And pretty much that's it. So we disconnect from the clients. So we stop and we get the, the response in the browser. So if you did everything right, you can just go ahead and upload this to your ESP32 dev module. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit so you can see what's going on in the serial monitor. You can see I already did it before. We'll just let it upload again. 
And this video, by the way, is an extension of a previous video I did where I did it with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Someone asked for me to do an Arduino, so I did. And if you go and watch that video, if you're interested in Python or MicroPython, you can, so I'll link that right here while this is uploading. And it's pretty much the same thing just in MicroPython. So it looks like it got uploaded properly here. And we see it printed my IP address, so make sure you get the right one from here. And I believe right now I'm actually connected to my normal Wi-Fi, so let's go ahead and connect to ESP32 access point. Now I already put the password in, so it's not gonna ask me for the password again. So let's go to the browser here. And once again, let's just go to a new tab and do 192. And yeah, so it looks like we did everything properly there. So if you got this point, congratulate yourself. Um, if, it, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I believe this has many use cases you can do for local networks, which is pretty cool. So maybe let me know what you guys are using this for as well in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, that would mean a lot, especially now as the channel is growing and we're finally past 1,000 subscribers. And once again, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy. Thank you.